Video game development is marked by incredibly long hours, fighting exhaustion as you push further and further beyond your breaking point. This is Crunch, and most games of any scale rely on it, whether you're an employee at a AAA studio or a hobbyist in a game jam. But can you make a game without crunching? Theoretically, yes. Once you come up with a game idea, you can divide it into tasks and estimate how long each task will take to figure out how long it will take to make your game. Then you just divide those hours over a realistic time frame, say, a week. Okay, there's no way you could actually do that though. Oh really? Like, you'd spend half the week just fixing memory leaks. No, no, no. Let's make a bet. I get one week to make a game, but I can only work for two hours each day. If I can't do it, I'll send you 100 Polymars plushies. Deal. Wait, what do you mean Polymars plushies? That's right. I'm super excited to announce that we're launching a limited edition Polymars plushie. It's made of super soft, comfortable material and looks really stylish. Whether it's on your desk, bed, or in your closet. Dude, you have serious problems. These are only available for the next 25 days, so be sure to get one while you can. Especially because if the campaign doesn't reach 200 sales, we'll have to stop making the plushies and refund all orders. So act fast and use the link in the description to get your very own Polymars. Wait, but I already have my own Polymars plushie. Wait, well, we haven't even made them yet. Dude, I don't even have that haircut anymore. Following my theory, I spent a lot of time Monday just planning and scheduling everything. This part is key if I want to finish in time, and a hundred plushies are on the line. I was actually asked to participate in a game jam that lined up perfectly with this challenge. Replitz Kajam. So I figured why not take part, and decided to make my game centered around its theme, huge. And I've never coded in JavaScript before, so I'm gonna try and use their JavaScript game library. I mean... It can't be that hard, right? Anyway, here's my idea. This is you. And this, yeah, that's the skyscraper you have to climb. You constantly move back and forth along each floor, and the goal is to get to the highest floor possible by charging up hops and avoiding nosy tenants. I sketched out this concept and went on to plan tasks for each day. My goal for Monday was just to set things up and create basic movement and player sprites. Luckily, I didn't have to spend too much time setting anything up. To use kaboom.js, you literally just have to make an HTML file and paste in a few lines of code. Trying to load a sprite was a bit more involved though, since I needed to set up a static file server to load local files. I ended up downloading some shady looking GUI program to do that, and now we have a square. And probably 20 viruses. Now let's make this square move with Wait, that, that has to be a mistake. It can't have already been two hours. Oh no. Ignoring the fact that I was already behind schedule, I made my square move with the arrow keys. Then I gave it gravity and the ability to charge up jumps. Basically, while space is held down, I continuously increase a jump force variable, and once space is released, I set the player's Y velocity to that jump force. Then every frame, I add the Y velocity to the player's Y position but that's not very realistic. So I also have to add a fixed gravity to the Y velocity each frame, so the player will accelerate downwards if it's off the ground. None of this is really necessary since Kaboom has built-in physics bodies and colliders, but doing it from scratch is a lot of fun. Plus, my custom physics are obviously way better. Well... So I made two frog sprites in GIMP, one for when you're idle and one for when you're charging your jump. Then I turn them into a sprite sheet and divide them into separate animations in the code, playing the charge animation when space is pressed and the idle animation when space is released. And that was the two hour mark. We're about a day behind, but we should be okay since Friday was supposed to be for bug fixing, and let's be honest, I wasn't going to fix any bugs anyway. I didn't have much time Wednesday because I was studying for an exam. Or, well... I was supposed to be. But I made a sprite for a floor of the skyscraper and got it working in game. Basically, I create a bunch of floors at the beginning of the game, and each time one goes off screen, I spawn a new one at the top of the screen. Then, I set the player's Y velocity to zero if it collides with the top of a floor while moving downwards. 
Now back to watching Minecraft video, I mean studying. I think it's time to add enemies to the game. There's this really weird guy on Discord who always bullies me. So I drew an enemy sprite inspired by him and animated its walk cycle. And I'll be honest, this alone took two hours. Despite doing everything I could to try and manage my time, I somehow wasted 20% of the development on this. There's still hope, but tomorrow is going to be a real challenge. Alright, as soon as I press this button, there is no going back. <laughs> Let's do it. Working as fast as possible, I separated the enemy sprite sheet into left-facing and right-facing walking animations. Then I made an enemy object that just moves back and forth and spawn a random amount on every floor. But it wasn't working. Okay, 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 dude, now is not the time for this. Please work now. Oh my god, oh my... Please work now. Please work now. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But there was no time to celebrate. I made a sprite with numbers 0 through 9, which I loaded in as a bit font to use when displaying the score. I add 1 to the score each time the frog's Y value exceeds that of a floor it hasn't passed through yet. With the UI there, the game was pretty much done, but something still felt off. Okay, jumping is its just frustrating. It doesn't feel right, there's like no way to like gauge your jump. So in the last half hour, I made a meter to show how much your jump has been charged, Experimented with screen shake. We're getting rid of screen shake, what the- May sound effects and kindly asked my friend for some music. And did an absolute speedrun of making a title screen. And that was it. We did it. I was absolutely exhausted, meaning I kind of missed the point of this entire no crunching challenge. But let's be real, I just wanted to prove Bargy wrong. You can check out the results from the game jam in this video. I was actually one of the judges, so my entry wasn't ranked, but I'm sure I would have gotten first place if it was. Definitely. And Kaboom.js was honestly really nice to work with, so I totally recommend it. You can use it right in your web browser with Replit across almost any device, and even though you can build very complex masterpieces with it, it also has a lot of helpful features and tutorials that make it a great starting point for beginners. And finally, while I don't owe Bargy 100 Polymars plushies, you can still get your own with the link in the description. What are you waiting for?